Hi, I'm Jasmine Zhang from Lake Placid High School, and today we're here to talk about the book 12 Years a Slave by Solomon Northup. So what's so special about this book is that it's based on a true story, and historians often refer back to this book as a historical reference. So being born in the North, Northup was given a lot of different opportunities that a black man usually wouldn't be given. For example, he could read and write, and more importantly, he could play the violin. He was a pro at it, in fact. And because of this talent that he had, it set the perfect scene for him to be swindled into slavery. Long story short, he's approached by two men who desperately need a violinist in their circus orchestra. But slowly as the job progresses on, Northrop realizes that what he had signed up for originally was just like a few performances and into a handful of them. So slowly, the group inches closer and closer to the south. I mean, he had his doubts, but the generosity and what seemed like genuine kindness carried his mind away from the possibility that he was being kidnapped. For example, before he entered into the south, his bosses were sure to remind him of obtaining his freedom papers. Now, these documents were key to his freedom because they thoroughly state the details of a free person, and without them, your freedom was at risk. So on these documents, they're given their height, age, and any features that are unique to them, such as birthmarks or moles. For example, I have here a document of a freedom paper of Mary Joyner. On there, it states her exact age, which is 11, that she's a daughter of John Joyner, and her exact height, her dark complexion, and a scar over her left eye. So when his kidnappers reminded Northup to get his freedom papers, it didn't really seem like they were gonna like kidnap him in any way. And plus, the amount that they were offering for the temporary job was far more than any job he had been offered. The deal was just perfect, but sadly, this perfect job set the perfect situation for Northup to be tricked into slavery. But when Northup worked on the plantation with other slaves, you can visibly see that he was different than them. Born a free black man in the North, you're allowed the opportunity to learn, to expand your mind, to read and write. You're taught morals and the virtue of life. You grow up being treated like human, and you wouldn't expect anything less. His various talents that stretch from playing the violin to creating various machines gave him an opportunity to take on the more complicated jobs on the plantation, whereas the unskillful slaves were stuck picking cotton and doing the basic jobs. So given his drastically different background and simply the fact that he was educated, it really set him apart from the other slaves that were on the plantation. Like in the book, it often talks about how Northup was different in that he would retaliate back, whereas other slaves didn't have the gut, didn't have it in them to retaliate back. It definitely has to do with the fact that Northup had been brought up knowing that like, this is not the way you would treat a decent human being. For example, in one uh, part of the book, Northup is given a task and he follows the task to every single rule, but his owner makes a motion to whip Northup. But Northup, knowing that he had done nothing wrong, instead takes the whip from his owner and whips his owner. As a smart man, he knew what the rules of being a slave were, but also born as a free black man and knowing what freedom was, he knew that like if he had done something wrong and there was a reason that he was whipped for, he'd take it. But if there was no reason, Northup wouldn't have stood up to something like that. During the 12 years that Northup was in slavery, it wasn't all just bad masters and cruelty. One master, his first one, Master Ford, was praised that rather than cursed that Ford encouraged his slaves to be innovative and to use their talents. For example, Northup is not talented in picking cotton, but his other owners still force him to pick cotton rather than giving him another job that would better suit his talents. While Master Ford, on the other hand, uses Northup for his musical talents and often tells him to invent better ways of doing things. Ford goes on to read the Bible to his slaves once every week and does not overwork them. In the end of his time with Ford, Northup expresses how he had only seen, I quote, the bright side of slavery, page 69. You wouldn't think that there would be a bright side to slavery and let alone expressed by a slave who had grown up with freedom. 
In the book, 12 Years a Slave, Master Ford acts as a safe haven figure for Northup. Now, it's ironic that Northup would even refer to Ford as someone who had shown him the bright side of slavery. I mean, sure, he was nice and all, but he was still a slave owner. This really goes to show how cruel the other slave owners were to refer to someone else that was also a slave owner as, like, the bright side. But I think in the book, it makes Ford scenes as a good character because the way Ford personally treated the slave was so much more different than the way the other slave owners would. So while Master Ford played a character that was nice to Northup, most of the other slave owners were not like that. So here I have with me today Beatrice Hollander, and I want her to share some thoughts and opinions on some questions regarding the common unnecessary violence inflicted by slave owners. So these slave owners would often beat their slaves for no given reason. Like, why did the slave owners beat their slaves so much? Or rather, why didn't they treat them nicely? Do you think there was like a mental satisfaction to it? Kind of like just having obsession with inflicting pain on people? Um, I think one of the reasons why they um, beat them was definitely the color of their skin. And that was, I think, played a really big part in it. Um, and just the way they were brought up in life, I think, that um, either like their parents or their aunts and uncles, they taught them that they should be like more violent towards them and treat them differently than them. And I think that the slave owners, most of them were definitely like white males in the South who just thought like their mental state of it was that they were better. So the way they projected it was through violence because they didn't really have a relationship with their slaves because mm -hmm. they were supposed to do work for them. Like, you were supposed to have friendships, like, with the slaves. Right. You know? So it was, like, a more, like, they viewed them as, like, animals. And exactly. Like, they didn't exactly. feel bad about, like, beating them up or inflicting pain on them. Mm -hmm. It was just, there was no moral to it, I guess. Yeah, and... The aspect of women and slavery and slave owners, a lot of times there's a lot of sexual abuse. Yeah. So... There was that part, and in the book, um, there's this character by the name of Petsy, I believe, mm -hmm. and um, she does get beaten up, a lot, but she's also sexually abused like mm -hmm. quite often. But the sad part is like the owner has a mistress who's like jealous of Petsy mm -hmm. because um, slave owner took favor upon her. Yeah. So Petsy gets um, beaten up even more like mm -hmm. whipped even more because mm -hmm. of this mistress which is really sad like there was no like she, Petsy had done nothing wrong but like because she had this uh beauty that attracted mm -hmm. her slave owner she was beaten because she was beautiful like mm -hmm. so following upon on the book um I have a quote from the book and it's I quote that those who treated their slaves leniently were rewarded by the greatest amount of effort Northup, page 64. So that's basically saying that slaves who were treated with more respect mm -hmm. were, they gave more um, hard work to their owners. Yeah. So, like, why do you think other slave owners still, like, would not, like, inflict a lot of pain on them despite, like, this factor? Um, well, I think because if they thought that they were getting some sort of like favoritism mm -hmm. that they might have thought that oh like we're gonna be free soon and they might have like these thoughts and they might be not as think that they have to be as like under rule I would say and just like going on their lives and they don't have to like do this a certain way or do that a certain way because they're like friends or so like, with their right, slave yeah. owner you know so like you're saying like if they give them like too many like yeah. rights and just like freedom in general mm -hmm. around the plantation yeah that they would eventually want more of it and more then, from it yeah right and yeah be... and i think also that slaves they sometimes they would try and like get away but other times they would know like what would happen and like be right. like, the, be consequences. In, the consequences mm -hmm. yeah. of it you know because so, like, slave owners will... they do this thing where it's like if a slave escapes or does something mm -hmm. bad they'll beat them in front of the other slaves just so, so they that, know yeah, that right. they're not you they mm -hmm. shouldn't do that like just so they learn their lesson by like watching like um you know other slaves are beaten up and then they know not to do that yeah 
and kids when they view something like that it definitely like torments them like inside yeah, like, like seeing like I feel like happening. as a slave on a like violent plantation mm-hmm. it's like something you know like you just know these are like things that you're not supposed to do because there are yeah. severe consequences that follow it whereas like maybe if the owner gave their them like more like freedom mm-hmm. the slaves would wouldn't take like such rules so seriously exactly yeah. exactly because he was often mistreated on the plantation you'd think that northup made various attempts to escape but northup never ran away it took him 12 years to finally obtain his freedom every day of those 12 years northup thought about escape but a plethora of factors slowed down the process northup first learned that his freedom would cost him his life when not long after he first woke up in a safe pen, he received a deadly round of whipping, simply because Northup spoke of his freedom that he once had. So over the course of one day, Northup learned that he would now be known as a runaway slave from Georgia. When the slave seller brought him deeper south to auction him off, Northup learned that his new name was Platt. How can a man who must lie about his freedom and never tell his true name regain his freedom? He'll be punished for speaking out and possibly killed, so it's better that he learn to keep his identity to himself. Without his real name, his wife and children have no way of locating him, because Solomon Northup no longer existed, only Platt did. And even though Northup could read and write without proper ink and paper, writing a letter was nearly impossible, and even if he did, finding a trustworthy person to mail it would be another hardship. Eventually he is saved by Bass, or, I quote, Angel of Kindness, page 209. But what are the chances that an abolitionist walks into the South? And what are the chances that the slave will trust a white man with a secret that could end their lives? I want to say that Northup is lucky because he didn't die a slave. He was fortunate enough to escape it.